In this video, we're going to look at the basics of putting a plot together in Julia. I'm going to be using, reusing some of the data that I used in my last video on putting together a dashboard. Our dashboard was a nice bar chart. And we're going to turn that into a plot that we can hopefully interact with in uh, the Julia Juno IDE. So uh, from this REPL. So my name's Chris. I've been a programmer for 15, 20 years. Uh, and I'm putting together, I'm learning this new language, Julia, and sharing my experiences with the YouTube community as I go so that hopefully you guys can avoid some of the mistakes that I'm making and also get some insight into uh, what sort of things to look out for when learning a new language. Uh, Julia seems to be a great language for data analytics and hopefully we're going to, uh, ho hopefully I'm going to explore some of those uh, data analytics ideas with you and one of those key to that is plotting. So let's, I've got on my screen here, the Julia IDE set up. We're going to try, uh, so in our last example, we created this dashboard using uh, Dash and Excel files to read in some of the sample data that I took from the New Zealand Statistics Office. Uh, what we're going to do is plot some of that information uh, inside Julia, hopefully in this plots pane that comes installed with Juno. So if you're interested in how I got here uh, in terms of my uh, REPL plots and this Atom setup, I've done a complete video tutorial about how to go through and install Julia, Juno and Atom on your computer to get here. So check that out in the links below, hit subscribe uh, and YouTube will suggest it for you. So we're going to, the first thing to do is to make, to plot on Julia is to make sure that you have the plots package installed and we're going to enter package mode, we're going to add plots. Hopefully this will work because sometimes we have to add the package straight from a GitHub address rather than from Julia's registries. But plots should be common enough that it's in Julia's registry already and it might even be installed on this computer. Okay. Then after we install plots, we're going to do a bit of a hello world plot to make sure that everything's working. And then we can use that hello world example to uh, adapt our uh, Excel file here to be plotted in Julia. Okay, so it looks like it's installing without a problem. The f after installing a new package, the first thing I like to do is to create a hello world example where you go through the basics of, we try to put something on the screen that represents using that package to make sure everything installed okay. So it looks like that's installed already. Uh, there were no changes to the update. So we'll bop, drop back to the Julia prompt and it says, the tutorial says if we do this using plots, uh, it will pre-compile using plots. Okay, that's great. While it's pre-compiling, I might edit the script as well so that we get ready for when we need to run this script. So I'll save this as plots. Uh, let's call it something different. Let's call it uh, birth plot. So what we're plotting is, what we're planning to plot is the uh, I've created this Excel, I've extracted this Excel file of the number of births in New Zealand from women between the age of 30 and 34 over the last 19 years. And we're going to try to plot this in Julia, hopefully using a line plot. I think line is the easiest one to get started with. We can also try a scatter plot. Uh, plotting in Julia should be one of the fundamental things to do because even the IDE acknowledges that with this plots pane. Uh, in a future video, I'm going to look at how to integrate all this with Jupyter. So I believe Julia has great Jupyter uh, interaction. Uh, I'm new to Julia myself. I've been learning this for uh, the last few videos now. Uh, I've got a lot of experience programming, but I've never used Julia before. So you'll have to forgive me if I make some mistakes with the language or if things take a bit longer than I expect because it's it's all new to me. Uh, hopefully by sharing what's new to me uh, with all of you out there, uh, you'll avoid some of the same mistakes that I make, or you might pick up some something that I missed and, and that's part of the learning experience. So uh, feel free to leave a comment below if there's anything you feel I've missed or that you need more information on. I'll do a bit of research and see if I can get back to you. 
Okay, it's still compiling. I'm going to leave it there for a minute and come back when it's done. And we're back. Okay, plots is finally <laughs> pre-compiled. So the first thing we can do uh, with plots, let's let's try out uh, plotting something to show that it works. This is like a hello world example. Do y equals some random numbers. I've just taken this from the uh, examples. So we've got x and y, and now we can plot x and y. Okay, hopefully that will come up in our plots window. Uh, like I said, I've never done this before. So it's a whole new learning experience for me too. Uh, though in general, it is a good idea when installing a new package to do such hello world, such basic example to make sure that it works. Uh, while that's figuring out how to plot, I'm going to start modifying our uh, script here to get ready to plot our uh, births from, from New Zealand. So what I've got is data tables. Okay. So we're using this data tables package. Ah, excellent. And in the meantime, that looks like it's come up here. So we can see we've got a plot of the random x, y values. Let's expand. So x is one to 10, quite simply. Uh, y is a vector with uh, random numbers between, uh, y is a vector of 10 random numbers. And we've got uh, all of them here range between zero and uh, one. So you can see 10 random numbers here have shown up on a plot there. Second value, for example, is 0 0.8. And the second value here is roughly 0 0.8. So I'm an engineer, I'm a mathematician. So 0 0.8, 0 0.82, it's the same thing to me. Okay, uh, we can see we've got some axes, uh, some legend here. We don't have axes labels on it, but I'm sure we can add these things as we go. So let's go back to our uh, plotting uh, using our own script. So we're going to plot the birth rate uh, over some number of years of these New Zealanders. Let's do, let's try the same command. So we can do plots dt. Now I had this file open the other day, bear with me for a second. Okay, and the files come up again. Uh, so the columns are year, age and births. So we want to plot year and births. To access that from the data table, we can simply do dt dot uh, year as the x axis, so x axis first and dt dot uh, births for the y axis. So let's try that. So we save this, come over here. Now to run one of these scripts in your REPL, we do include and then the path to the script, which I wonder if it's in the same folder. Okay, if it's, yeah, so it's, oh, I didn't do JL. So if it's not in the same folder, okay, yep. Yeah. So uh, Julie is looking for it in this folder. My name's Chris, by the way. Julie is looking for it in this folder. However, uh, I believe it's in a sample folder instead. So I've saved it in here. Now you need to do this double slash when referring to a path in Julie. So I've done it here. It's the it's an escape character to actually put the slash into the string. So double slash users Chris sample birth plots dot jl oh no okay where do i put it give me one second okay you see what i've done here is that i've missed the extension dot jl it's just birth plot so we'll try without the extension okay that didn't work either load not defined all oh, right okay uh, <clears throat> Pardon me. So the mistake I've made here, load.defined, is that this is not defined. From our uh, test here, I was using an Excel files package, which I haven't included in birth plot. So let me include that there. And now we can run our include statement. I should, no, what's going on? Okay, so we run include. And hopefully that will come up with our plot in a second. So what it's doing here is uh, reading in our Excel file using the Excel files package, reading in the sheet that's named 30. You can see the sheet is named 30 here. I've extracted this from the data. So our sheet is named 30. Then it's uh, 
putting that into a data table, so data table being another Julia package, a, a pretty common type to work with in Julia it seems, is to use this data table. Uh, that's stored in the variable dt. And now we're plotting dt the column year and dt the column birth. So that should be plotting soon. I'm surprised it hasn't done so already. Now, my computer is quite heavily loaded at the moment. There's uh, this, I'm, I'm recording the screen and on my little laptop, which means that uh, some of these commands can take a while to execute. Hopefully on your computer, these things will be a bit faster, particularly if you're using a desktop. Okay, it looks like it's read in the data table because it's just popped up here in the workspace. And here we go. So it's finished plotting. Uh, you can just ignore this. This is me pressing the wrong button in the IDE. So uh, you can see here it's plotted the data from our Excel spreadsheet. It goes from uh, 17,000, roughly 17,000 in the year 2000, up to over uh, just between 19 and 20,000 uh, in the year. This is 2019. So if we flick back to our Excel, we can see we started about 17,000 and we've ended up at uh, oh, nearly 20,000 over here. So that's how you can uh, read in something from Excel to plot into Julia. There are a few more options to, uh, there are of course many more options to use this plot plots package. Yeah, I'm sure we can put in the axis labels, we can put in the legend. Uh, let's see if we can do that now. Okay, it looks like we can do that. So let's try, I wonder if this sort of syntax works in Julia. I like to lay out my code uh, vertically like this. I don't know if this syntax works in Julia. Uh, this is New Zealand births by mothers aged uh, 30 to 34. Okay, let's save that. And let's see if we can, uh, where's my, let's include that and see if, there we go. So the uh, titles popped up. Can we add on a legend? I can't see it in the documentation, uh, not easily anyway. Oh, I'm sure we can try simply legend equals test. So this is one of the ways I explore different ways. I really should be looking at the documentation to figure out, yeah, so it's it's thrown a bit of an error there. There's no uh, legend. It looks like legend should be an array rather than a string. Uh, so trying to find, uh, I've been a bit disappointed by the Julia documentation. It can be a bit hard to find some of these things. Uh, where can we look at it? So they've got a whole manual, which is quite confusing to get into. So hopefully this video gives you a bit of an overview of, of the different, of how to plot in Julia. Uh, it's, it seems a bit hard to put in details like a legend. We can do, one second, I'll go back to you. Okay, we're back. It seems to be, I've, I've found the way to do uh, axis titles. So we can do X label equals uh, the X is year and Y label is uh, births. And let's try that now. Yeah, there we go, births and year. So that's how you could do a basic plot in Julia. Uh, the, if you want me to go into more detail, leave a comment below and I'll explore some more of the plots package for you. Uh, that's where I'll leave it. So hit subscribe and uh, see if that video comes out in the future. And I'll see you in the next one.